Still breaking down game one, looking ahead to game two. What can the Celtics do better on defense with Jimmy Butler? What can they do better with Tyler Hero? And what can they do better on offense? It's all right now on the Lock On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, gapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your daily routine and your first listen every day. Locked On Celtics is free. It's available everywhere podcasts exist, Monday through Friday, and bonus podcasts whenever the Celtics play on a weekend, like, for example, this weekend when the Celtics play Game 3 at home on Saturday, post-game podcast from me there. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show on YouTube. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. I was one of the media voters for the 75th anniversary team, and I'm here in Miami, Florida, from my hotel, getting ready to break down the uh, game one kind of, well, 12-minute debacle and look ahead to game two with my good friends, Tom Westerholm, Tom underscore NBA of Boston.com. Tom, what's going on, my man? What's up? How you doing, man? Oh, you know, a little, just a little basketball, just a little basketball fun and frivolity. Uh, we were just I, talking I, about I, it. Whatever yeah, it is, but, sounds like more fun than the Celtics had in the third quarter. The Celtics did not have any fun in the third quarter. The third quarter was absolute dog crap. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess we can start, start there because that's – when you talk to the guys, you, you get the, you know, an Ime and Ime has a non COVID illness. So he didn't talk on Wednesday, which is interesting. Very um, weird. Right. Yeah, like it's, yeah. That's a little weird. Like I, I'm not going to like, obviously none of us are going to speculate about anything, but it's just. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Odd. Odd. Yeah. So we're going to see, we're going to see how <laughs> that goes. Um, by the way, today's show is sponsored by Sakara. We'd like to thank, Sakara Nutrition uh, for sponsoring Locked On Celtics. It's a wellness company anchored in food as medicine. On a mission to nourish, go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 for or enter code or enter code locked on 20 to get 20% off at checkout. So Al Horford out for uh, game one, and we didn't get an update today, but or Wednesday, but Chris Haynes had an update saying that Al Horford not likely for game two, the Celtics said he hadn't been ruled out. They, you know, we're trying to piece things together here. It, Horford not likely for game two. Woj said that he is hopeful that he that that the Celtics are hopeful that Al could be back for game three, that it won't go past two games. So it's it's just kind of all all over the place, and we're all trying to play detective because no one knows, and the Celtics won't say. Uh, but you know, here's Ime with a non-COVID illness, and you're like, oh, okay, well that's that's interesting. Um, Al was around the team. They only found out two hours before, um, it was, it was probably about five o'clock yesterday considering when yep. he spoke. So, um, it was all kind of last second. So I don't know how this is going to go if, and I feel like if they had Al Horford, then some of the third quarter stuff might not have gone the way it did. If you had yeah. Al, if you had smart, then maybe some of the stuff doesn't go because, you know, you're not trying to get back into it with Aaron Neesmith. You're not, you, you know, you got Derek White coming off the bench and all that stuff, but it is what it is. You know, um, you, you just got to play with who's in front of you and kind of unfortunate that all of a sudden the season that started with two COVID illnesses, including one from Al Horford, yeah, is now threatened by a COVID potential illness. I don't know if he tested positive or what, but health and safety protocols. To Al Horford. I mean, it's kind of a creepy bookend right now, and hopefully the Celtics can get through it. It is. It, it's a very weird, creepy bookend for sure. Um, it, I mean, like I guess, obviously, again, without without speculating at all, it does seem like the most likely scenario is that 
Horford did test positive just because he um, like he, he's told the Boston, he told the Boston Globe that he's vaccinated. He and, and per the NBA's rules, like th that's like people who are vaccinated only get tested if they have symptoms. Um, so, yeah, it does seem like that's probably the case and that he'll, you know, he'll probably have to register all the all the negative tests. Like, we'll see how this goes. But, um, yeah, I think you're right about the third quarter. And I think the one the one good thing for the Celtics is I think it wasn't just Horford missing Horford. That was such a problem. It was obviously missing smart, too. Like. It, like without smart, the Celtics just have some, some real issues, especially like Peyton Pritchard can really shoot obviously. Right. Like, and, and we've seen some good things from him and he's really come a long ways, um, you know, throughout the season to, to become like a pretty productive member of a very good team. But like this heat team, like they targeted him hard. The Celtics have to figure out something else. Um, you know, I think it was, uh, I think it was Nikias Duncan who, who tweeted out that um, like, the, the he targeted him something like 16 times um, mm -hmm. in, in pick and rolls or in, in those switch opportunities. And, and they scored 1.2 points per possession on those things. Like that's, that's significant. That's, that's, that's really tough, um, you know, for a defender to, for a team to overcome with, with their best defender out. I just think like, you know, you put smart in there and everything just gets so much simpler. Like those switches are just not as easy. You're just not scoring one point. I like Jimmy Butler was great. Jimmy Butler has had an, unbelievable playoffs you're not scoring 1.2 points per possession in 16 possessions if marcus smart is the guy who's doing the switching instead of Peyton Pritchard. right so, right I, I mean it does sound like you know per chris haynes report it does sound like smart you know will likely be back for game two how limited he will be we'll see but i, I think maybe even more so than horford frankly because rob williams was so good in especially in mm -hmm. the first half mm -hmm. um you know I, I think maybe even more so than horford just getting smart back on the floor is going to be so crucial Derek white does a lot of really good things, but um, the Celtics really need that one-two punch of Smart backed up by White, as opposed to White starting backed up by Neesmith and Pritchard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is like you talk about how teams are constructed, right? right. And, and if you're if you're a good team, if you're good enough, just like the Bucks with Chris Middleton, like I'm sure a lot of Bucks fans said, "Hey, if we only had Chris Middleton, you know." Like, yeah, that's true. If you only had Chris Middleton, who knows? It, yeah. well, it, right. I mean, he's Chris Middleton. He's an all-star. If, if you had him, then who knows what would have happened. Yeah. Um, and that's that's fine. You're constructed in a way that said, well, okay, you don't have Chris Middleton. You have Grayson Allen. And that's a choice. That's the choice that the front office made. And here, here are the Celtics. The, these are the choices that the front office and ownership made. That this is how the team is constructed. That – Eme can only trust a certain few guys, and when you lose two starters, you have to have you have to have real depth. And the Celtics are okay, but just like we said, we've been saying, Peyton Pritchard is a good player, good shooter. He's tough as nails, but you can shoot over the top of him, and you can you yeah. can bully him on defense. And that's that's just how it is. If the Celtics aren't going to have Smart and aren't going to have Horford, they're not going to be good enough to win. That that's Miami will be the better team. So. Having smart back, like you said, is going to be huge. If he's, if, especially if he's not particularly limited, um, and that that will help. That will help stem the tide because one half of what happened in the third quarter was the Celtics turning it over and Jimmy Butler having like five steals in the third or something like that. And the other part is finishing on the other end. And and when you look at the, we were talking about this before. When you look at the 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 box scores. I'm, I'm going through the cleaning the glass because they, you know, they do a great job of breaking things down. You look through and you say, geez, you know, after, after the fact, this looks kind of even. If you didn't watch the game, you say, well, this is a pretty even game. But what you had is one team being great in the first half, one being great in the second half. But one thing jumped out at me was the half court points per play. Yep. Miami uh, 112 <laughs> Point two, uh, the uh, points per 100 possessions. I assume that is yeah. uh, eight, eight points per 100 possessions. Uh, Boston 84.7 in the half court, like that right there. Well, just to just to clarify, if there's any math nerds listening, it's actually points per half court play. So it's it like it, so it, that excludes obviously the transition opportunities. So it wasn't points per total 100 possessions. It was points per half court in the half court. Play. In the, in the half court, right. right? Yeah. So just because I didn't, I didn't say that right. Um, I'm a little. My my brain might be a little foggy. 
Um, so uh, basically, the the net the net effect here is Miami was worlds ahead, worlds ahead of the Celtics in the half court, and that right there is, is part of why. Um, let's let's dive into that half court uh, disparity and what the Celtics could do to fix that. Let's do that after I talk to people about Truebill. Truebill is going to help you save money on things like subscriptions that you forgot about or the free free trials that were new without your consent because that's a, a pretty sneaky scam out to get your money. Sign up, give your credit card, get this free trial, and then you forget about it. And next thing you know, your card is charged. You don't want that. Plus, we've all signed up for a million streaming services. Who can keep track of all their subscriptions? Well, Truebill is an app that helps you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions you, do not, you don't want, need, or the ones you forgot about. On average, people save up to 720 bucks a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it very simple. You link your accounts. Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And with Truebill Concierge, they will cancel things that you want canceled. You don't have to do anything. They'll handle it. Truebill has over 2 million users and it's helped help save them over $100 million. We've uh, talked to Matthew B., who said he saved $600, more than $600 on a direct TV bill, save $120 on a Sirius XM bill, save $840 on car insurance in a, a, a year. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now, truebill.com slash locked on NBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Today's show also brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market. I've already talked to you about that a lot. Now there's Built Puffs, which they've had for a while, but there's a new birthday cake puffs that is delicious and is only 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, nine grams of sugar. So it basically takes, tastes like you're dipping your finger into a big plastic tub of birthday cake frosting. And if you don't want to take my word for it, I've told people this before. If you haven't heard me say it on the podcast, I had a 13 year old in the car with me when I picked up my, my delivery and he ate two. So if he's grabbing two of these things, you know that they're good. So check them out. Built puffs are covered in hundred percent chocolate. So it means you can eat healthy and enjoy them. It's a great, um, it's a great snack. It's a great meal replacement. Uh, great to bring with you to the gym. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So go to built.com to get your birthday cake puffs now. Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. LOCK15 gets you 15% off every single time at built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make Locked On NBA Big Board your second listen? We just had the draft lottery. Our Orlando Magic won the, uh, the draft lottery. And host Rafael Barlow of the Locked On NBA Big Board will have new big boards dropped uh, with the new draft order. Rafael is the uh, author of the NBA Big Board newsletter, so check it out. He's he's great. He's in person scouting people across the country, across the world. So he really knows what he's talking about. Check out Locked On NBA Big Board. Let's get back into what happened here in Game One of the Eastern Conference Finals. And before the break, I was talking about this half court where Miami was just disgustingly better in the half court than Boston was in the half court. And so you got two elements here, Tom. One was Boston's defense was allowing things that Miami could capitalize on. And two, in the second half, Miami was just shutting down everything, especially in that third quarter, shutting down everything in the third quarter. So I'll give you the choice. Which which would you prefer to start with, the offense or the defense, the Celtics offense or the Celtics defense? Well, I think let's start with the Celtics defense because I think, you know, we touched on it. And I think that the half court, so much of, of what that comes down to is just um, they, they couldn't do anything about Jimmy Butler, right? Like it, even when they defended him well, like you know, there was like a couple of plays where Tatum was one-on-one -on -one with him and, you know, and Butler just made like that, that one absurd turnaround that like Tatum. Yeah. Could not have come closer to blocking just a, a superstar shot, right? Like that was that was an incredible shot. Um, and, and if you you know if you go through the matchup data, and I know the NBA's matchup data isn't always perfect, but 
it's if I'm the Celtics, I'm a little concerned about the fact that like nobody really did a good job on Butler. Like even like even when it was Jalen Brown, Butler was four for six against Jalen Brown for the NBA's like matchup data. Like he was two for five against Tatum. Like, you know, that's obviously those are very limited sample sizes, but like it obviously you can't do the Peyton Pritchard thing. Like that's not going to work. I, so I think the Celtics have to try to figure something else out here. And that's, I mean, especially if Al Horford's going to be out for a little bit, that's going to be kind of complicated. Like certainly Marcus Smartback helps immoderately, right? Like that's, that that's a complete game changer, but even so like Butler was making shots over, you know, much like over better defenders than Pritchard. It wasn't just um, Peyton that was getting torched and, you know, so much of what the Heat were doing in the half court was stemming from that, right? It was just like that, just that that constant pressure from the mid range that Jimmy Butler just kept kept putting on and putting on. It was like really impressive by him. I don't know how sustainable it is. Like again, some of those shots. I know he's had a great playoffs. Some of those shots were pretty absurd, and it's not yeah. like he's averaging forty one for the playoffs. You know, he's averaging like twenty nine, which is a lot. But right, we'll see. We'll see what happens going forward. I mean, I do think there were a couple of putbacks that you know him he had he had some offensive rebounds that yeah right. I think the offensive rebounds have been a problem but I I think they stand out as a an obvious problem like just like uh you know a, a, a mole would stand out as an obvious sign of skin cancer <laughs> like they stand out but it's not like the biggest like the the offensive rebounding I think can be fixed. Yeah. Um, just with, I mean, a little bit more effort, a little bit more awareness. And also by the time you get to the offensive rebound, there are probably three, four, five things that have been done wrong that lead to the offensive rebound. Like, I think part of the offensive rebounding issues is because guys have driven past the, the perimeter and are getting into the teeth of the defense and it's forcing help and it's, is the, the help is coming in a way like Rob overcommits sometimes and, you know, guys, guys over help and guys aren't like, there's no help the helper and, and that kind of stuff where, okay, somebody comes over to get your guy. We'll go get his guy or what, you know, there's like a lot of these little type of things that can be done over the course of a play before you get to the, well, the Celtics are out of position and they gave up an offensive rebound. So my contention is, I, I it's it's almost like, um, if you if you treat these other things, this won't happen. So you you, I don't think the focus, even though being at the beginning of these these media sessions um, on Wednesday was about the offensive rebounding. I got the stock answers. Well, it's a team thing, and blah blah blah. All right, whatever. Um, the 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 real answer I think is, do the other stuff. Yeah. Do you know, stay in front of Jimmy Butler, stay in front of Jimmy Butler and make him hit those tough shots. Look, man, if Jimmy Butler hits these shots over and over and over again, then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on the Lockdown Heat podcast. I'm going to say I was wrong to say that Jim, Jim, uh, Jimmy Butler is not close to Jason Tatum and I will I will eat my crow. That's part of what you do, because if he's going to be that level superstar for four wins out of seven. Then, then I'm an idiot. I was wrong. I'll, I'll take my shots and, you know, you move on. I don't think that he's going to do this for four more, you know, three more wins for the Miami Heat. I think the Celtics can stay in front of him a little bit better and, and getting better personnel, to your point earlier, is going to help. Also, Tyler Hero was a huge issue. Like, I said it in last night's podcast. The Celtics came out to, I forget what the lead was, but when when Tyler Hero comes in and is hitting, first of all, he steps into like a clean, easy shot. Why you play drop against Tyler Hero uh, beyond me? Beyond The me. very first one. The Like what? That was Rob, right? Rob was drops back too far. Like I, I didn't understand that. It might have been Grant. I, I forget who, yeah. who it was. But one of them, one of the Williamses, like it's, I I wrote the this exact line in Boston Sports Journal on Boston Sports Journal in my preview. Tyler Hero is one shot away from getting hot. He's always one shot away from getting hot. 
So why would you let him step into an in-rhythm jumper and then all of a sudden everything plays off of that? The first, the first quarter could have been a 13-point lead for the Celtics. And instead it was a three-point lead. Yes. And that's because that was solely because Tyler Hero came in and was awesome. And they were running pick and rolls with him and Bam out of bio and who's throwing lobs to Bam. And all of a sudden, Hero came in and picked the Celtics apart. And then you overreact to that. And then everything else started cascading downhill. So the Celtics just need to come up with a better plan. You want to play drop and, and force him. You want to play drop and force him into mid-range shots? Okay, fine. There's two elements to that. You got to chase him out or, or, or around the, the, the screen a yep. lot harder than they were. Yep. And you got to step up a little bit. You can play drop, but you don't have to be down in like the middle of the paint. You can at least come make him think like, okay, I, th this is where I want to pull up from. Like, I, I think the Celtics did just a poor, poor job defensively on Hero before the whole Butler stuff went off. I I could not agree more. And I think that th like your point about it could be 13 in that first quarter, even if it's like eight, right? The Celtics won the second quarter by, I, I believe by five, they were up by eight going into halftime. You know, you win that first quarter by a little bit more and all of a sudden, you know, you're up by what? 13. The whole dynamic changes. Halftime, that it completely shifts because the thing is like, yeah, the heat go on that run. Even if the Heat go on that run, the Celtics responded with a 9 nothing run of their own immediately afterward. That 9 nothing run only cut it back down to three, right? Like, like the, the, they, they had so many chances like that to, to, to like just make the game a little bit. And, and I think that one thing to remember it's that, that is really important in all of this. Yes, like the Celtics were probably, you know, they were dropped way back, you know, too far on, on that hero. Like there were all kinds of defensive, you know, miscues here and there. And, and I, I think it's really important to remember that they found out that they were going to be without Horford two hours before the game, you know, like, right. That, like you, all of a right. sudden, all of these things that you've like, the smart thing is tough, right? You, you lose Marcus smart. That is tough. Um, you know, but that's, that was a, like, you, you kind of knew that that might be possible. You had at least a day to prepare for that. The Celtics had like two hours to prepare for no Al Horford. That's rough. I mean, the fact mm -hmm. that they went up by as much as they did in the first half, I thought was, you know, a testament to Tatum and their offense and, and Rob, you know, just the impacts that Rob has. But yeah, I mean, it's, it is hard to, uh, to come up with a game plan that quickly. So, but I mean, regardless, they all like that, that, that being the case, they've also played Tyler hero quite a bit. He has lit them up before, right? You should know these things. Like you should, you should have a better idea of how to defend him, whether or not Al and, and, and smarter in the game. So yeah, I mean, that, I, I couldn't agree more. I thought that was a wildly impactful stretch um, that probably got a little bit understated as Butler went off in the second half. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think those little things, as I love to say, and I'll take every opportunity to say it, clutch play doesn't always happen in the fourth quarter. Tyler Hero's first quarter yes, play was yes. clutch. That's you know, a that was example. clutch. Yep. You know, that, that right there changed the entire course of the game because it's just so different mentally playing, making a huge run and then giving up the lead is just mentally you guys react to that differently. You press a little bit sometimes. And so if, if that lead was bigger in the first, even, and, and I know, you know, butterfly effect, things don't go the exact same way, but if the lead is bigger in the first and things kind of go similarly and Miami comes out of the, the half with that huge run, and they don't go up by as much when Boston takes makes their run and takes back the lead, let's say in the third quarter. Mentally, for Boston, there's a calming effect. We just took back the lead. All right, we're good. We're right, good. We're right. Some of those, some of those passes that the Celtics make, maybe they're not picked off. Maybe the Celtics feel just a little bit calmer about that. Maybe Jimmy Butler gambles a little bit more and gets burned on a couple of those. You know, little tiny things that you can say, okay. You just change the dial this way and that way, just tunes in a little bit differently, and the, the entire game could could change. Maybe Miami still wins it. You don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like maybe, like maybe Miami just rallies a little bit earlier because the Celtics were up by more in the first quarter. Like I, that's also plausible. They could have closed on a fourth quarter run. 
And yeah. Tyler Hero could have come back in. It could have been could have been a Jimmy Butler buzzer beater, and we're having the exact same conversation. But you just <laughs> never know. You feel like you feel like the is a missed opportunity there. Um, and and they just poor, poor, poor defense from a, a team that I mean they sound like excuses, but they are they are things that are are influencing them. They you just come off a series playing the Milwaukee Bucks, and you're you're so used to dropping, you know, an extra two steps. Yeah. against you know Grayson Allen and all of a sudden you're like that's not Grayson it looks kind of like it could be a Grayson <laughs> Allen if you squint but no that's Tyler Hero and you don't want to drop back that far or that's so, Max Struess yeah 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 like that kind of stuff you're like this, this this isn't the same level of guys that you were just playing so with one day off like you get that like oh crap so if you want the ultra super positive spin you treat game one like it's a practice and you say okay you know, we got all of our film. We see all the mistakes that we made. We, and then we we fix that and you go into game two with all of those. It's kind of like, I mean, now you're in a, a six game series instead of a seven game series. But yeah, you treat it like that and then you move forward. I think there's all kinds of, I honestly think, look, that was a, that was a tough game for the Celtics. Assuming they get Smart back and assuming Smart is healthy, I think there's a lot of actually positive spin um, that you could do here. Like, you know, and I'm I'm not always somebody who's always going to be like a positive spin guy. But I just say you, Tom. I know, I know. I but I look, I I, I kind of think that like Butler. I don't think Butler is going to average 41 for the series. And Butler scoring that much was crucial for the Heat. You look at Bam Adebayo. Sure, he does a lot of good things for you, but like he didn't do much offensively. He, mm -hmm. he fought a lot on the defensive end, but like he did not kill the Celtics at all. Um, I I think that there's some reason for the Celtics to hope that. You know, some combination of Horford if he come, you know, if and when he comes back, and plus Grant Williams can really do a good job against him. I think, you know, like Rob getting kind of back into the swing of things is crucial. They had no answer for him in the first half. Like, you know, like I think they will figure a lot of things out that they just didn't have in that first game. Um that that could that could really benefit them. Um, and I think also, you know, you look at this is a pretty resilient team. I, I tweeted this last night, but if they don't, if, if Jason Tatum doesn't make a layup in game one against the Nets, they would have lost all three of their game ones in this series so far. Game five against the Bucks was so much more crushing, you know, for this team, mm -hmm. I think, than, than last night was. All kinds of reasons to still, like, buy in. All they need to do is steal game two, and it's a 1-1 series going back to Boston, which is all you can really ask for anyway. Like, myriad reasons to, to right. not, like, panic over – that said – um, game five was a missed opportunity, and I would posit yeah, that sure. last night also was a missed opportunity as well. <laughs> right, but also game one against the Bucks was worse than this. I think. Yeah, yeah. Game one against the Bucks at home yeah. was worse than this. To lose a game one like this on the road, road team, you know, after every, like, I even said, I expected them to lose this game. Now, how yeah. they did it, you know, in the course of things, like, ah, they shouldn't have. But sure, yeah. coming in, I was like, I expect my the course of the series I've been saying since the beginning, lose game one, win game two, home series from then on six and six. So nothing's changed. Nothing's changed in my the way I see this series playing out. But in the course of the game, you're like, damn, this could have been Celtics win game one. And then ooh, who knows where it goes? Right. All right. We're going to talk about the Celtics offense when we come back. There's a whole lot of the Celtics offense in that half court. You know, Miami's defense scored a ton, but the Celtics' offense scored like nothing in the half court. Big, big story from that uh, game as well. First, let's talk about Sakara. Now is the time to seek wellness, joy, and abundance in all areas of life, starting with what you eat. What you put in your body is so important. With Sakara, you get nutrient dense meals, snacks, and supplements to nourish your body without ever sacrificing taste. Or quality. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. It gives you the tools to transform your life with their organic, ready to eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. You know, you, a lot of these athletes that prolong their careers, you talk about them going plant based. This is kind of an easy way to get that plant based diet and get started on that their nutritionally designed chef crafted breakfast lunches and dinners are made with powerful plant rich ingredients helping boost your energy support digestion curb your sugar cravings and get your skin glowing i know that's very important for me and tom uh plus it's delivered right to your door right now sakara is offering listeners 
20% off your first order when you go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 or enter code locked on 20 at checkout. That's sakara S A K A R A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash locked on 20. Got to get your skin glowing, Tom, with that Sakara. What are you talking about? I'm 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 literally glowing right now. I, I do, it does seem like you are. I have I have I have this sunbeam behind me. I'm I'm glowing. Regal, saintly, I might even say. Uh, look, Mama built a saint. I, <laughs> I say it often. <laughs> I have heard you say that many, many times. <laughs> you probably have, honestly. <laughs> All right, let's get into the Celtics offense. The half court offense, which sucked. Um, the I mean, their nineteenth percentile. Uh, that that was, was very, very poor, uh, according to cleaning the glass. So part of that is, um, yeah, you miss shots and all that stuff. But the, that third quarter where the Celtics scored nothing, like they they barely touched anything for for like seven, eight minutes. Turnovers, um, just bad mistakes. Just it feels like the Celtics, they're they're slow on the uptake. Sometimes Jalen threw a pass to Grant Williams in the middle of the lane. That was maybe a full two seconds too late. Yeah. You know, like they, they do. And I, I don't want to pick just solely on Jalen because it's, it's a lot of play. The, when the Celtics offense isn't going well, like one of Jason's turnovers was a very simple, easy drive. Max Struess comes over. Uh, this is in the third quarter. Max Drews comes over. They pinch him at the top of the, at the free throw line. I don't know if it was a zone, but it looked like it was a zone. It was a very simple drive. Kick over to Grant. Either Grant takes that three, which Grant, by the way, in this in this game, uh, was got away from the stuff that he did in Game Seven against Milwaukee. Yes, you know, like shoot the damn ball. Or if you sw- if you swing it over to Grant and he didn't shoot it, if he wanted to drive. He could have collapsed the defense and kicked it out to Jalen Brown standing in the right corner by himself. It's very simple, easy play. Eme talked about it after the game. We we you know tried to do too much. We we hunted for fouls. We we weren't trying to make the easy play. Like just make the easy plays. That that play stands out to me because it's a Tatum turnover, a live ball turnover. When it's a very simple, easy pass, swing, swing. And then who knows what happens? Jalen hits a corner three, doesn't hit the corner three. But at least the Miami defense is working, and maybe somebody close out. You drive, and, and Tatum gets the ball back, and it's a it's a layup. Celtics started the first half getting to the rim really easily, and then in the second half, didn't at all, like at all. So I think that third quarter highlighted how easy it is. I think it's too easy still for the Celtics to be pulled out of their game plan and they get too caught up in, oh, no, things are spiraling. Let me find something that I can do. And 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 Tatum, you know, we talk about how great a superstar he can be, but also, like, sometimes you just need to work the offense and, and just make the right play, and eventually those opportunities to, to be the guy who answers will be there. Yeah, it was I, the Grant thing was weird, right? Like that was that that just to, like to to your first point, like it was it was odd the way that that his game kind of switched up. It felt kind of like Milwaukee daring him to shoot, sort of gave him the confidence as the game went on when he knocked a couple down. I never felt like he got that same level of confidence because the Heat were not daring him. You know, like he got a few looks like that he probably could have gotten up there, but it wasn't the same type of like wide open like we're way more focused on Jalen and Jason type look. And, you know, part of that was the fact that the Heat were doing a much better job, in the, especially in the second half, of containing Jalen and Jason, you know, on their dribble drives and, like, you know, guarding their yard much better than, you know, let's be honest, you know, any three out of the five Bucks players on the court at any time, like, you know, could do. So, like, it was far easier, I think, against the Bucks to, like, force some of those switches that that Tatum loves that that, you know, just – he, that he could just really abuse. And I mean, obviously, yeah, if you can get Tyler hero or, or Max Struess on him, then sure. But um, you know, Jimmy Butler is a much different defender. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. these guys, 
the, you know, PJ Tucker, like they, they have guys who are just much different defenders. So that said, you know, I, I, I do, I think you're right too, um, that like the Celtics do kind of freak out a little bit sometimes, right? Like they, they, they just kind of seem like, um, and you know, I think there was a weird juxtaposition between the way the heat played in the first half and the way they played in the second half. Like, like, they were so much more intense in the second half. The first half, they looked shocked by the quality of team that they were yeah. playing. I mean, I, like they did not look ready for a real, you know, kind of. I mean, God bless, you know, Joel Embiid <laughs> tried his truly hardest um, in that series. That man played with a broken face. That Sixers team is not the Celtics. Like they're just not that close. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Um, you know, like so. So I did think that there was a bit of a shock there. But then, yeah, like the fact that the Heat came back with such an improved intensity on the defensive end almost seemed like it threw the Celtics for a loop in the same way the Celtics threw the heat for a loop in the first half. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, don't know, I think it's, I think it's just Eric Spolster magic, right? Like uh, he's just a, he tricked the Celtics in the first half into thinking the heat was <laughs> off. And then, um, he uh, decided they were not in the second. Yeah. You know, it, it is funny because this is when, when you think back to game one against Milwaukee, that that's kind of how I thought the game would go for Boston. Like, we knew coming in that coming off the Brooklyn series, facing the Bucks was going to be just a different animal. Um, but they never quite, they never kind of had that moment like Miami did. Um, Miami, yeah, we were joking around. Like one of the coolest things that happens to me is I just like get to like talk to people in these arenas. Like, I happen to be walking back into the arena at halftime, and like Mike Breen is like walking next to me, and you know, I've gotten to like know Mike Green a little bit, which like, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing here? He's a freaking Hall of Famer, man. Like, this is cool. So Mike's like, you know, uh, yeah, wow, what a half, huh? Like, wow, like that Mike Green, <laughs> Green voice. I said, it feels like they're very happy to not have Brooke Lopez and Giannis Antetokounmpo to deal with. And he's like, yeah, I think you're right. And then all of a sudden Miami said, hey, you know what? We got Bam out of bio over here. And Jimmy Butler, and they're also really, really good defenders. Like Miami's, Miami realized, like, okay, yeah, we can't just let them do this. So the Celtics for, were like, they they came out with the force, and they they saw these these lanes to the rim. And they're oh, this is great. I think I think they just kind of relaxed a little bit in the second court in the second half. Like they relaxed a little bit. Miami turned up the the the. I was I can't get out of I can't get out of saying turned up the heat. It's too late. You've already lost it. Damn it. I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> turn, <laughs> damn it. Turned up the music? Ah. My I'll just say it. Miami turned up the heat. <sighs> oh, so bad. What a and they, smart analogy of you. <laughs> oh. And they um, ran away. I, I, Tom, take it from me. I'm just so. I'm gonna go drink some bleach. Uh, I just uh, punishment. <laughs> uh, so well, d- well, don't do that. Uh, but regardless, yeah. I mean, it, it was. I, it, it was. It was really significant. And like, I think. I think you're right. I mean, like, look. You you hate to say like, oh wow, like you know, it was all the Celtics like screwing it up because because you don't want to be like. Ah, Miami did nothing because, of course, right. they did. Like, Jimmy Butler right. was brilliant. Totally. Like Bam Adebayo was brilliant on the defensive end. Like they were great. And at the same time, you can look at—I mean, literally like six possessions in the third quarter where Jason Tatum just handed the ball to the Heat, and it's like ridiculous. Just cut out four of those. Have a bad quarter where you turn it over two or three times instead of <laughs> instead of a catas- like a historically catastrophic one where you turn it over six. And that 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 twenty to two run looks completely different, you know. And mm-hmm. that 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 burst of heat, you know, of that that uh, you know, that Miami turning up the heat looks a little bit different if the if uh, Tatum doesn't keep um, just handing the ball over. So I mean, it did go two ways, right? Like the Heat absolutely cranked it up, absolutely played much better in the second half, and absolutely you know beat the Celtics. Like the Celtics also contributed you know i I think it's Mm -hmm. fair to say that the heat won that game not that the celtics lost it but also the celtics had plenty of opportunities to win it themselves and just kind of kept passing it to jimmy butler like yeah um you know pass it to the right team and better things will happen one way or the other (laughs) yeah and look i mean they they even cut it down to 10 with like eight minutes to go in the fourth and i was sitting there thinking like okay 
I actually tweeted it out saying, is it, is it worth it? Is it worth it to go for this game? And, and knowing that obviously the answer is you never give up on a playoff game. You right. never give up on an Eastern Eastern conference game, but also like just as almost like a thought experiment He's like, but, but okay. So they cut it to 10. They never quite got it back. They never made like one last push in the fourth quarter. It, it, was it worth it to play Jason Tatum 44 minutes? Was it worth it to play Jalen Brown 42 minutes? Because, I mean, I don't know that, and Ime has said this before, shorter minutes in, in the middle of a game isn't giving guys rest. Right. So he, he And he believes it. If 34 minutes versus 44 minutes, I don't think that Ime sees that as rest, that we saved, we saved these guys. I think rest is not being on your feet. So I think if he subscribes to that, then then I'm wrong for even suggesting it. But, you know, I just can't help but feel like, oh, God, at that point, just sit him down. Just sit him down. Give him give him 10 more minutes off their feet and, and get into game two and just and save it. But I know I know I know as I say that and as I tweet it out, that's not how how these guys work and not how it works in general. But. Just, just more of it is. It's a shame that they even got to that point where that was even a thought that popped into my head. Well, I mean, look, like so, you look at Tatum after the game, like doubled over, you know, like hands on his knees and everything, like looking mm-hmm. exhausted. Like I had so many people because I tweeted something similar. Like I had so many people in my mentions saying, like, they're young, they're young, and it's like, okay, but like young people get tired too. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, Kind of, kind of, kind of mentality we are promoting here, where it's like uh, the young people aren't allowed to be tired. Like, no, the young people get tired too. So, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think uh, I, I get what he may say about like, yeah, like you know, minutes in, in a game, etc. Certainly, that makes sense. On the other hand, okay, it's the playoffs, so you know, getting off your feet means like taking a game off, right? Like that, that would be real right. rest. You're not gonna do that. Not gonna do it's that. The playoffs. So I mean, look, if if you're not gonna have three days three three days off between games two and three like you did in the last series, like these guys are gonna put a lot of miles on their bodies over the next mm-hmm. like week or two. Like this is gonna be a really grueling stretch. So I don't know. I mean, look, I understand his theory. I understand his you know, and it, it makes sense to me. But I you know. We'll see. That's again, it's a lot of miles. You know, I'd be a little bit concerned. Well, we'll see what happens there in game game two. Um, Marcus Smart coming back is going to be huge. huge. Uh, if it's huge. Noel Horford, then then they'll 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 have to deal with it. And, and again, Daniel Tice becomes super important. Mm-hmm. And good thing they got him back. So, all right. Well, bottom line is. Be better on offense. Be better on defense. I think that's where we came down here after 40 you minutes. To, of you don't even have to be better on, but you, you can just be better in the third quarter. You played pretty good just, offense and half decent. De- like it was pretty good. Just don't, just don't completely collapse. Like greater. stop throwing it to Jimmy just, Butler. Good Lord, yeah. he's not on your team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, that's Tom Westerholm. Tom underscore under it. Uh, Tom underscore NBA, and I appreciate you the viewer, the watcher, the listener for subscribing to the show, making the show uh, what it is. It's your uh, subscriptions. It's your sharing the podcast that has pushed this podcast into the top 50 on Apple Apple sports rankings, which is amazing to me. Um, getting up past 60, you know, 6,000, we're like 6,100 now. So uh, subscribers on YouTube over that. So thank you for that. Um yeah, it's been it's been a great ride. I very much appreciate all of the listeners, watchers, even those of you from Miami who are hate watching and hate listening. I see you in the comments. Don't worry. I'm keeping those receipts just like I kept them for the Milwaukee series. And we'll we'll revisit that after the end of the, after the end of the series. So, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, thanks for sharing the podcast, telling your friends, telling your family, telling everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.